Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I think we need to have a story time. So, when we come back after this quick little break, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened to Dale the truck. So, it's 6.30 in the morning, and uh, I just left the campground on my way to work, and... I noticed a little bit of a ticking noise coming from the truck and so I pulled over and it sounded like either an exhaust leak or a lifter tap so I thought well I better check the oil oil pressure was good check the oil oils fine um, so I said well if it is just a lifter tap then I shouldn't have any problem just driving this back to work checking the uh, taking the valve covers off and seeing what's going on anyways uh, so I started up pulled back up the highway and as I'm accelerating I hear something almost like something let go um, in the engine unfortunately and uh, it started idling bad and uh, so I pulled off to the side of the road and as I'm slowing down it actually stalled it will run but definitely uh, something's gone gone wrong. I'm not sure if a if a lifter, in fact, has um, backed off and is causing a one valve to not to operate properly. But um, looking like we're going to have to call a tow truck again, guys. Discouraging to uh, own an, an older vehicle that you've just put all this work into and um, starts giving you issues. So. We'll keep you posted. So, because I uh, remembered that I had my big tool kit uh, with my impact in the back of the truck, I had this little kit, which had a 7 16th socket that allowed me to take the rockers or the rocker cover, valve cover off. And uh, there's your problem. Son of a gun's hot. But there's your problem. So I've got a couple of choices. One is I can take the rocker out, put the valve cover back on, and attempt to drive it back to the shop because right now I'm about, uh, oh, about seven or eight miles away from the shop. Or I could call a tow truck and pay another $70 again. Anyways, at the very least, I am going to take the rocker out, put the valve cover back on, start the truck and see how it runs. Maybe I can limp it back. Um, anyways, I'm going to do that. I'll see what happens. Alrighty, let's start her up and see what happens. It's running not very smooth, but I think it'll be enough to get us back the eight miles to the shop. So let's carry on. And uh, I went to go replace this rocker with the new one that we had. And so there's the new one. And I noticed that this rocker was loose. I thought, well, maybe it's on its way out. But then I also noticed there was no push rod until I looked way down inside that little hole right there. And, well, I managed to pull part of it out by hand, and that's it. And with a little bit of, oh, I'm gonna say it, house luck, this piece was down in the valley, and I managed to hook onto it with a narrow magnet. And I pulled it, out through that little tiny hole and I didn't even pull the lifter out well at least we don't think we did so I'm gonna get a uh, scope and stick it down in there and make sure that lifter didn't move again I don't think it did because 
I didn't feel anything real heavy. Lifters, when they're full of oil, uh, they're gonna be a little bit heavy, and that one wasn't, so. Wow, luck is on my side with this one today, boys. So we're gonna get the new push rod put back in there. I had a bunch of extras left over from, uh, from the other motor. So we'll get that put in there, and we'll come back on a startup. All right, well, we managed to get the new push rod on as well as get the old one snaked out because uh, when it broke, it left, it stayed inside. And it, in fact, did pull the lifter. So with my dad, old Eagle Eye, get in there with a long, narrow screwdriver and a magnet, got it put back down into place. We got them back on, and as you've seen in just a minute ago, uh, him adjusting the valve. So. Now that we've got that done, I've got to wait for a new uh, cork valve cover gasket because this one does have a small little tear in it. I must have done that when I was uh, taking it apart or putting it together at some point. Anyways, uh, we'll get that put together first thing tomorrow morning and be back and running Dale again for the weekend, hopefully with no issues. But tonight, I'm taking home a Chevy Cruze. Hopefully the AC works because it's hot as... It's hot out. <laughs> Anyways... Uh, We'll close out this video here shortly. So it's now Saturday and I just popped into the shop here to grab some tools out the back of my truck and I wanted to make sure you guys know uh, kind of what's going on, the follow up to getting that rocker arm and push rod fixed. If you don't follow me on Instagram, now's the time to do it, it's old car guy. And uh, I've been showing, sharing some pictures with some of the problems we've been having with the truck this week. And well, we got the rocker arm and the uh, push rod installed back in the truck and we got it running again, but we still think there's an issue. It, uh, it's running rough, almost like a misfire, and we think we quite possibly may have a damaged valve. Um, when I pulled the parts, when I pulled the broken parts out of the vehicle, it all come out in just two pieces, and I, th I was pretty confident that I don't think we lost anything out of that. But there is a possibility that a piece of metal from that rocker arm uh, may have got sucked in, caught a valve, scratched it or damaged it, possibly bent it, who knows. Um, but anyways, let me show you what I mean by it's running rough and you can hear it kind of puffing up back through the carburetor. So let me get it started. <laughs> I'm not sure if you heard it in that little clip, but every time I gave it a little bit of throttle, you could hear kind of that little bit of snapping noise or whatever coming up through the carburetor. So that tells me that I possibly have a valve train issue. So unfortunately, I think uh, the intake and that head has to come off so we can determine what the problem is. And uh, we will be doing a follow-up video to that. But as it sits right now, Dale is down and out. So I guess we got to find out what the problem is and uh, so we can get back driving this thing. Anyways, we'll catch back up with you guys in a bit. And there you have it. That's where we stand with uh, Project Dale. And for all you guys who were, you know, making comments on Instagram about, uh, you know, a few different things and what could be the issue and this and that, I don't want you to take my responses wrong. I'm certainly appreciative of all the answers that I get because I want to get to the bottom of this. And when initially I felt that it was just a one-off thing, in my heart right now, I still believe that it is just a one-off thing. But I think that one-off thing created another issue. So are we up against valves being too tight, adjusted too tightly? Are we having push rods that are too long, springs that are too tight, or too, uh, too much... Uh, pressure on those springs I don't know but we will get to the bottom of it and I'll be sure to bring you guys along for the ride thank you uh, for all the uh, great comments and if you think you know what at this point the problem is 
leave your comments down in the comment section below and, and uh, let me know what your professional opinion is on that. I know there's a couple of guys out there who are pretty keen uh, on these 350s uh, and uh, may have a pretty good idea uh, on where to look and where to start. So, nevertheless, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate everything you guys do. We are on the verge of pushing 4,000 subscribers. If you haven't done so already, why don't you uh, follow the instruction right here and hit that subscribe button and bell notification on this channel. So, having said all that, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.